J. R. R. Tolkien constructed many Elvish languages. These were the languages spoken by the tribes of his elves. Tolkien was a philologist by profession, and spent much time on his constructed languages. The Elvish languages were the first thing he imagined for his secondary world. Tolkien said that his stories grew out of his languages. Tolkien also created scripts for his Elvish languages, of which the best known are the Sarati, the Tengwa, and the Surth. Topic: External history. J. R. R. Tolkien began to construct his first Elven tongue c. 1910–1911, while he was at the King Edward's School, Birmingham, and which he later named Quenya. C. 1915. At that time, Tolkien was already familiar with Latin, Greek, Italian, Spanish, and several ancient Germanic languages, Gothic, Old Norse and Old English. He had invented several cryptographic codes, one called Animalic, and two or three constructed languages, one called Nefarin. He then discovered Finnish, which he described many years later as like discovering a complete wine cellar filled with bottles of an amazing wine of a kind and flavor never tasted before. It quite intoxicated me. He had started his study of the Finnish language to be able to read the Kalevala epic. The ingredients in Quenya are various, but worked out into a self-consistent character not precisely like any language that I know. Finnish, which I came across when I first begun to construct a mythology, was a dominant influence, but that has been much reduced now in late Quenya. It survives in some features, such as the absence of any consonant combinations initially, the absence of the voice stops b, d, g, except in mb, nd, ing, ld, road, which are favored, and the fondness for the ending in an, einen, oinen, also in some points of grammar, such as the inflectional endings sse, rest at or in, nna, movement to, towards, and llo, movement from, the personal possessives are also expressed by suffixes, there is no gender. Tolkien with his Quenya pursued a double aesthetic goal, classical and inflected. This urge, in fact, was the motivation for his creation of a mythology. While the language developed, he needed speakers, history for the speakers and all real dynamics, like war and migration. It was primarily linguistic in inspiration and was begun in order to provide the necessary background of history for Elvish tongues. The Elvish languages underwent countless revisions in grammar, mostly in conjugation and the pronominal system. The Elven vocabulary was not subject to sudden or extreme change, except during the first conceptual stage c. 1910 c. 1920. Tolkien sometimes changed the meaning of an Elvish word, but he almost never disregarded it once invented, and he kept on refining its meaning, and countlessly forged new synonyms. Moreover, elven etymology was in a constant flux. Tolkien delighted in inventing new etymons for his elvish vocabulary. From the onset, Tolkien used comparative philology and the tree model as his major tools in his constructed languages. He usually started with the phonological system of the proto-language and then proceeded in inventing for each daughter languages the many mechanisms of sound change needed. I find the construction and the interrelation of the languages an aesthetic pleasure in itself, quite apart from the Lord of the Rings, of which it was, is in fact independent. In the early thirties Tolkien decided that the proto-language of the elves was Valeran, the tongue of the gods or Valor. The language of the elves derived in the beginning from the Valor, but they change it even in the learning, and moreover modified and enriched it constantly at all times by their own invention. In his comparative tables Tolkien describes the mechanisms of sound change in the following daughter languages, Kenya, Lindoran a dialect of Kenya, Teleran, Old Noldoran or Fenorian, Noldoran or Gondolinian, Ilkoran especially of Dariath, Danian of Osriond, East Danian, Taliska, West Lembran, North Lembran, and East Lembran. In his lifetime J. R. R. Tolkien never ceased to experiment on his constructed languages, and they were subjected to many revisions. They had many grammars with substantial differences between different stages of development. After the publication of The Lord of the Rings 1954-1955, the grammar rules of his major Elvish languages Quenya, Teleran and Sindarin went through very few changes. This is late Elvish 1954-1973. Topic: <laughs> Publication of linguistic papers. 
Two magazines from issue 39 in July 1998, and Palmer Eldelambron, from issue 11 in 1995 are exclusively devoted to the editing and publishing of J. R. R. Tolkien's gigantic mass of previously unpublished linguistic papers even those not published by Christopher Tolkien in The History of Middle-Earth. Almost each year, new Elvish words are published and the grammar rules of the Elvish languages are disclosed. Access to the unpublished documents is severely limited, and the editors have yet not published a comprehensive catalogue of the unpublished linguistic papers they are working on. Topic. Internal history The Elvish languages are a family of several related languages and dialects. Here is set briefly the story of the Elvish languages as conceived by Tolkien c. 1965. They all originated from Primitive Quendian, also called Quendran, the proto-language of all the elves, who awoke together in the far east of Middle-earth, Quivienen, and began, naturally, to make a language, all the Elvish languages are presumed to be descendants of this common ancestor. Tolkien invented two subfamilies, subgroups of the Elvish languages. The language of the Quendeli elves was thus very early sundered into the branches Eldarin and Avarin. Avarin is the language of various elves of the second and third clans who refused to come to Valinor. Avarin developed into at least six Avarin languages. Common Eldarin is the language of the three clans of the Eldar during the Great March to Valinor. It developed into Quenya, the language of the elves in Eldamar beyond the sea, it divided into Vanyarin Quenya, also Quenya, colloquial speech of the Vanyar, the elves of the first clan, Noldoran Quenya, and later Exilich Quenya, colloquial speech of the Noldor, the elves of the second clan. Common Teleran, the early language of all the Teleri. Teleran, the language of the Teleri, elves of the third clan, living in Tol Erisir and Alqualand. Nandoran, the language of the Nandor, a branch of the third clan. Nandoran developed into various Nandoran and Sylvan languages. Sindarin is the language of the Sindar, a branch of the third clan, who dwelt in Beleriand. Its dialects include Dariathran, in Dariath, Falathran, in the Falas of Beleriand. North Sindran, in Dorthonian and Hithlam, Noldoran Sindran, spoken by the exiled Noldor, the acute accent or a, e, o, u, or circumflex accent a, e, i, o, u, y, marks long vowels in the Elvish languages. When writing common Eldoran forms, Tolkien often used the macron to indicate long vowels. The diaresis a, e, o, is normally used to show that a short vowel is to be separately pronounced, that it is not silent or part of a diphthong. For example, the last four letters of Anulandale represent two syllables, rather than the English word dale, and the first three letters of Arundel represent two syllables rather than the English word ear. Topic. Internal development of the Elvish word for elves Below is a family tree of the Elvish languages, showing how the primitive Quendian word Quendi people, later meaning, elves, was altered in the descendant languages. Topic. Fictional philology There is a tradition of philological study of elvish languages within the fiction. Elven philologists are referred to by the Quenya term Lambengolmor. In Quenya, Lam means spoken language or verbal communication. The older stages of Quenya were, and doubtless still are, known to the lawmasters of the Eldar. It appears from these notices that besides certain ancient songs and compilations of law that were orally preserved, there existed also some books and many ancient inscriptions. Known members of the Lambengolmor were Rummel, who invented the first Elvish script, the Sarati, Fina who later enhanced and further developed this script into his Tengwa, which later was spread to Middle-earth by the exiled Noldor and remained in use ever after, and Pengal, who is credited with many works, including the Asanwe Kenta and the Lamas or the account of tongues which Pengal of Gondolin wrote in later days in Tol Erisir. Independently of the Lambengolmor, Daron of Dariath invented the Sirth or Elvish runes. These were mostly used for inscriptions, and later were replaced by the Tengwa, except among the dwarves. Topic. 
Pronunciation of Quenya and Sindarin Sindarin and Quenya have a very similar pronunciation. The following table gives pronunciation for each letter or cluster in international phonetic script and examples. Vowels Consonants differing from English The letter C always denotes K, even before I and E, for instance, Kelleborn is pronounced Kelleborn, and Sirth is pronounced Kirth, thus, it never denotes the soft C asterisk S in scent. The letter G always denotes the hard as in give, rather than the soft form asterisk D, as in gem. The letter R denotes an alveolar trill R, similar to Spanish RR. The digraph DH, as in caradris, denotes, as in English this. The digraph CH, as in orch, denotes chi, as in Welsh bark, and never like the CH asterisk T, in English chair. The digraph LH denotes, as in Welsh LL. Topic. Elvish scripts Most samples of the Elvish language done by Tolkien were written out with the Latin alphabet, but within the fiction Tolkien imagined many writing systems for his elves. The best known are the Tengwar of Fina, but the first system he created, c. 1919, is the Tengwar of Rummel, also called the Sarati. Topic. List of known Elvish scripts devised by Tolkien In chronological order Tengwar of Rummel or Sarati Gondolinic runes runes used in the city of Gondolin Valmeric script Andiokenya Kuinyatic Tengwar of Fina The Sirth of Daron Topic. Internal history of the scripts Prior to their exile, the elves of the second clan the Noldor, used first the Sarati of Rummel to record their tongue, Quenya. In Middle-earth, Sindarin was first recorded using the Elvish runes, or Sirth, named later Sirta in Quenya. A runic inscription in Quenya was engraved on the sword of Aragorn II, and Dural. Topic. See also Languages constructed by J.R.R. Tolkien Elbrith Gilthoniel Entish Namori Oromian